Hey everyone, welcome to my early review video of the Kakwa 40 backpack made by Durston Gear. For those who are new to the channel, Hiking Nerd is about thoroughly field testing gear and sharing ideas to inspire your next adventure. We get pretty in depth here, so if that's what you're looking for, feel free to check out my other videos and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more. This video about the Kakwa 40 pack comes after limited testing compared to my level 3 full Hiking Nerd review videos. However, since this pack was just released this month, I wanted to share this information early so that it can be helpful to you. I should also note that Dan Durston sent me this production model pack for testing, but I'm free to do or say whatever I like. I value my editorial integrity on this channel and only work with those who have the same values. Okay, let's take a closer look at this pack. The Kakwa 40 backpack is a 28 ounce framed backpack with roughly 40 liters of internal storage capacity and about 15 liters of external storage. It comes with a host of features that you often see on heavier packs. In fact, it shares many similarities with a backpack that I've used extensively over the last five years, the Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor 40 to 60 liter. So I'm expecting this to become my primary pack for three season adventures due to its lighter weight and anticipated durability. You'll hear me reference this Flex Capacitor backpack throughout the video because of the similarities. I'll plan to do further testing in winter conditions and with more demanding activities, just to be thorough, but I expect most users will be happy using this pack for three season backpacking and travel only. Let me show you the Kakwa 40's many features and attributes now, starting from the outside of the pack and working our way in. First, let's start with my numbers. I'm 5'9 and 155 pounds with a 37 inch chest, a 31 inch waist, and a 19 inch torso length. And this is measured from my C7 vertebra to the iliac crest. I have the medium size pack, which is the right size for me. And for reference, the manufacturer suggests the medium would fit a torso size of 16 and a half inches to 20 inches. This is how I always adjust the pack to size. First, I loosen all the straps and tighten the hip belt. Next, I snug the shoulder straps until I start feeling a little bit of weight on top of my shoulders. Then, I adjust the sternum strap and then finally tighten the load lifters to bring the weight closer to my spine. As you can see, the pack is a good fit and the curved frame contours the shape of my back. It's not the most well-ventilated pack I've used, but when fully loaded, the sides tend to come off my back a little, which means I only get sweaty along my spine. Pack fit is an important element of comfort, so while you might really like the price point or specs of this pack, it is unlikely to work for everyone. For instance, the hip belt is sewn on and can adjust from 28 to 42 inches in circumference. This works for me right now, but we'll see if it continues to work on multi-week adventures where I will inevitably lose some weight. Those with a waist greater than 42 inches will need to wait for a future iteration of this pack or find a creative way to extend the strap length. The hip belt on the Kakwa 40 is a dual strap reverse pull design, which is easy to adjust and contours better around the hips. I got to experience this difference compared to a single strap design through the many iterations of the Flex Capacitor backpack, and it's a meaningful feature. I've been testing this hip belt's ability to carry loads and noticed that with 45 pounds of weight, the weight sits differently on the hip compared to the Flex Capacitor, which has a rigid hip belt with better contouring. With the Kakwa pack, I noticed initially an uncomfortable pressure on my left hip carrying over 30 pounds when I had all straps cinched equally on the left and right sides of the pack. This prompted me to tighten my left shoulder strap more than the right one due to the asymmetry of my body, which alleviated the discomfort. I can't say that I was acutely aware of my body asymmetry as I had always felt comfortable just equally tightening the straps on my flex capacitor. The S-shaped shoulder straps on the Kakwa contour my body pretty well. Some hikers will have better success with J-shaped straps, uh, which are not currently offered with the Kakwa, but others might find the differences minimal. And despite the thinness of the shoulder straps, they are actually quite comfortable. I attribute this to the two and three quarter inch width of the shoulder strap and overall cut. It's also important that this pack has load lifters, which allow you to dial in the fit when you're carrying heavier loads. With my style of hiking, I'm on the move for most of the day, so I'm looking to have easy access to items that I'll use at least once every hour, like food, water, navigation, and sunscreen. For clothing, I don't mind setting my pack down, but it's nice to have an exterior pocket to hold a rain shell, which allows me to modulate my temperature when I'm active. All other items can go into the interior compartment of the pack, like my sleeping bag, tent, stove, and excess food. The Kakwa 40 has reasonably sized hip belt pockets, which can hold a large phone or an assortment of snacks. 
I'm actually used to slightly larger pockets, but these thinner pockets have the advantage of being less intrusive when I'm swinging my arms. The best thing about the Kakwa's hip belt pockets is that you can zip it closed with one hand, and the waterproof zipper is super, super smooth. Big win here for me. This pack also has dual shoulder strap pockets, which I've grown very accustomed to. My first video on this channel actually was a review of the Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor in 2017, where I asked for another shoulder strap pocket since the first one worked so well. Since then, dual shoulder strap pockets have become increasingly popular with cottage manufacturers, as well as some of the high volume brands. These dual shoulder strap pockets can fit a phone, bear spray, or water bottle. I do think that these pockets could be better suited for 700ml bottles. Uh, I have an assortment of 700ml bottles that I use from smart water and core bottles to cycling bottles and Nalgene's. For winter trips, I like to carry this 710ml on the fly Nalgene bottle so I can pour boiling water into it. As you can see, it's not only a tight fit, but it also pulls the shoulder straps themselves. For a hard sided bottle like this Nalgene, I can also feel a bit more pressure on my chest. I think this would be solved with two things. The first, a slightly larger circumference or a stretchier mesh and cord. And the second is adding more volume in the bottom of the pocket instead of the taper that we tend to see with a lot of minimalist packs. My personal preference when it comes to hydration is to carry a water bottle on my shoulder strap because it's just that much easier to access and it's always within sight so I remember to stay hydrated. With that said, let's talk about the side pockets on this pack. One side pocket is tapered with water bottles in mind so that they're easily accessed with the right hand. My right arm actually has fairly poor mobility, but I'm still able to grab a water bottle from this pocket without much difficulty. I would expect that hikers who carry one liter smart water bottles are accustomed to carrying their water in the side pockets, so the smaller shoulder strap pockets may be a non-issue for them. There's also a small hole for a hydration hose near the right shoulder strap, if that's your preference. The other side pocket is taller and pleated so that it can hold more stuff. A unique feature to the two packs designed by Dan Durston, uh, namely the Kappa 40 and the DD40 pack, is the Quick Pocket, which is a vertically zipped pocket that can be reached with a pack on. This pocket shares the same space as the side pocket, so you don't get any additional volume here, but it can be used to hold snacks, a hat, gloves, or any other items that you might want to access on the go. You'll also want to note that there is no drainage hole at the bottom of the side pocket. And this is actually not a problem, as you'll see here. So once the water saturates the seams, you'll see it start to drip out. Actually, water also drips into the main body of the pack, since this pack is not seam sealed. Okay, let's spin this pack around and take a look at the front mesh pocket. This shove it pocket is made of a non-stretch knit mesh sewn with pleats so that it can expand and it's closed off with a stretch opening. You'll notice that this elastic opening is protected using the same Ultra 200 fabric found on the rest of the pack to help improve durability. We'll talk about this fabric later. Now, some hikers like to have a crisscrossing bungee cord system in front of this pocket, rigged up using these small little loops. With the Kakwa 40, you can do a basic crisscross pattern, but additional loops midway on the pocket would give more options while adding little complexity during the manufacturing process. If you want to carry an ice axe, you can add a little cord loop and then use a double-sided Velcro strip or cord to secure the axe, as shown here. Finally, on the top of the pack we have the Y-strap and roll top closure. The Y-strap is handy for carrying bulky items to free up more space on the inside of the pack, like a tent or bear canister. I personally like to have my fully loaded bear canister inside the pack for better weight distribution, though I've seen people get creative with this. The roll top closure is pretty standard here, and you could skip buckling the roll top if you'd prefer to use the Y-strap instead to hold the roll top in place. I do really like the fact that there are no snaps or velcro here on the roll top closure, 
so nothing gets snagged when I put stuff in. Looking at the inside of the pack, it's just a big compartment with a velcro back panel that holds the frame and foam pad. The hollow aluminum frame weighs 3.5 ounces and is stiff. This is yet another similarity with a flex capacitor which also used hollow aluminum tent pole tubes to create a tremendous load carrying ability. The CACWA's frame slides into two reinforced sleeves in order to create a stiff vertical structure that can pass the load to the hip belts. If you're having trouble getting the frame back into the back panel, I'd suggest emptying your pack and then pulling upwards on the panel fabric while rolling the Velcro over the frame. You get better at it after a couple times, but I think there could have been an easy solution here to include a small pull tab on the flap that can double as a point of attachment for a hydration bladder. You can see that this pack should easily fit a BV500 or BV450 bear canister, or another similarly sized canister, despite the fact that it tapers a little bit at the bottom. Now, I don't really like to have my bear canister at the very bottom of the pack because for me, the bottom of that canister tends to rub against my tailbone. It's much more comfortable to have the bear canister sit on top of my sleeping bag. And the foam pad that comes with the CACWA 40 only weighs a half ounce, but it actually does a good job of adding protection from the internal contents of the pack. All right, now let's talk about the materials used for this pack. The reason I left this for last is because, you know, while some gear nerds like me might be really eager to talk about fabrics, ultimately what I think is most important for a pack is everything else I spoke about earlier. If it doesn't fit right or have the right features, even the most cutting edge fabrics won't make you happy. With that said, let's talk about this new cutting edge fabric that is used on the Capra 40 and has seen quick adoption by many other ultralight brands and cottage manufacturers. The fabric is branded as Ultra 200 and it's also sold under the name EcoPack EPL 200 Ultra. This is a fabric made by Challenge Outdoor, a company headed by renowned fabric maker Hale Walkoff and is part of the Challenge Sailcloth family of companies. For those who don't care about the specs, uh, what I would have you take away is that this is a super durable and lightweight fabric that's very well suited for backpacks. Recycled materials are used for one third of the fabric, and although I still have yet to do some long-term testing of this pack, my expectation is that other parts of the pack will degrade much sooner than the Ultra 200 fabric will. Dave Cheneau tested this fabric by dragging a loaded pack behind his truck on a gravel road for almost two miles before a hole formed. Okay, let's nerd out for a minute or two about Ultra 200. This is a composite fabric made from the combination of UHM WPE, which stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene, uh, which is woven with recycled polyester strands and then laminated with a 0.5 mil recycled PET film. UHM WPE is also known under the brand name Dyneema and has important physical properties. It has high tensile strength, high abrasion resistance, and low moisture absorption. However, just the inclusion of UHM WPE in a composite fabric doesn't make for a good pack fabric. Uh, DCF hybrid fabrics are an example where the UHM WPE strands are sandwiched between two less durable materials, so those less durable materials degrade first and result in fabric failure. By comparison, the Ultra 200 is made by weaving 200 denier UHM WPE strands with some recycled polyester strands, uh, and those polyester strands are there to help with adhesion. And then, as I mentioned before, it's further laminated with a special adhesive to a 0.5 mil recycled PET film. On the CACWA, what this means is that the UHM WPE strands face outwards and will protect the pack from external damage, while the PET film that faces inwards provides some water resistance. And apparently it's more than 20,000 millimeters of hydrostatic head. It's also worth noting here that the PET film is there to lock the UHM WPE strands in place and that the CACWA backpack itself is not waterproof because the stitching allows water ingress. Should you ever need to repair a hole on this backpack, um, there won't be a problem because most repair tapes will adhere well to the PET film. So overall, I think that this is a highly refined backpack that comes in at a competitive weight and hiker-friendly features. Durston Gear, in partnership with Caviso, have really set a high bar for others to match in terms of price. However, ultimately it's up to you, the consumer, to decide if the price justifies the value. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and feel free to ask any questions as well. See you next time.